Okay. Um, so I'm uh, I'm calling my project a very Mobius walk, and um, uh, the location which I'm looking at is uh, the the site uh, I'm choosing is the uh, Sex Out Ten Plaza, and uh, for my uh, site constraints, I was looking at the uh, at the six umbrellas that were given on the site, and how uh, the uh, how I, I could incorporate the form within this, but also make the form overlap with each other and try and connect and support each other, uh, even when the uh, curves are going around themselves, um, which was a very tough deal for me. Uh, I tried a couple of uh, other variations on the left that you can see. Th th those are my initial sketches uh, for me to try out different uh, settings. Um, and I tried, uh, like this was my, uh, after I had discussed this with uh, Juni and uh, Tom the other day, I figured out that I needed to simplify my entire thing to first realize whether I can at least start overlapping and still uh, achieve the horizontal uh, equilibrium. Um, so doing the two loops within themselves, uh, but not extending the overlaps too much, uh, it was quite easy for me to achieve the horizontal equilibrium. Uh, so I started um, making it a little bit more complex or complicated for myself, um, which was my uh, trial number two, in which I thought of uh, overlapping uh, even more than before and trying to get uh, one of the legs of this vault to go across and touch on the other side. Um, this was, uh, this took fairly long for the horizontal equilibrium to calculate, but I was able to achieve um, less than uh, four degree in angle deviation in this case. So uh, I was happy. Uh, when I started overlapping uh, the curves within themselves, uh, the first thing that I realized or the thing which uh, uh, made a little bit difference to me was uh, how should I make the initial curves so that my uh, the legs of the vaults they are not clashing with each other so um, so if you can see here I, I've tried to make one of the loops a little bit bigger than the other loop so that the bigger loop is a little bit higher than the other loop so that it's able to go below it and that was one of the strategies which I used even for my other trials. Uh, so once I had done my trial one and trial two, the third trial was when I went back to my initial goal of uh, making the two loops meet each other and to support each other. Um, that was quite tough. And as you can see that uh, even after running 10,000 iterations of the horizontal equilibrium, I still could not uh, get, get the uh, angle deviation to be less than 40 degree. Uh, so I would call it a failed attempt. And when I looked at the, uh, the vertical equilibrium, I realized that there is a strong crease where the two legs are meeting each other. And that is what is creating, I, I'm guessing a lot of stress in this area. And I'm not able to uh, achieve the horizontal equilibrium in, in this uh, part of the uh, vault. Although I was able to achieve the uh, the feel of the vault, but uh, maybe this will this was not a purely compression vault and something else was needed. Um, I tried putting also uh, the legs on two sides. If you see these two legs, uh, I thought maybe these would support uh, the uh, forces which are going, which are coming down from this edge and coming down from this edge. Um, but unfortunately, this did not work out. So I went back to my uh, previous one, but this time I thought of taking the legs all the way through each other. And uh, just by giving supports uh, extra, so getting the supports were, I guess, the major concern here, so that I could play with the height, so which part of my vault would rise uh, higher than the other. Uh, the entire game of these overlapping um, uh, vault structure was that um, I was trying to figure out uh, a, 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 an easier way to uh, figure out how to maintain the heights of different parts of the vault. 
and in this particular case i uh, realized that if uh, the the area which i want to bring down i can just start attaching uh, a leg a little closer to this uh, whereas on the other side you can see that it's not uh, there is no leg supporting it to the ground so i was sort of able to do that and if you look at like the three or two or three levels that you can uh, come up with by doing these uh, uh, these overlapping walls i would imagine um so i was uh, so this was something really nice and uh, i mean then i could also figure out that people could walk on it because the uh, the grade the gradient of the slope was quite less and for people to start walking on top of each other uh, also the uh, interesting part was that wherever these two things are overlapping i was trying to keep the minimum height uh, between the overlapping edges as uh, after the vertical equilibrium a uh, minimum of 2 meters so that people could easily walk around across so the initial concept of uh, a mobius walk would still hold true although not completely true but still uh, somewhat um then uh, the fabrication strategy what we had discussed yesterday i just thought of implementing uh, the dual mesh uh, in a manner that i would still get my edge pieces and uh, they would still be supported on the floor um the remesh was also uh, a little bit of challenge because we didn't have the seagull uh, um combo seagull installed but then i went to my grasshopper basics and did it on that um and yeah so i got about 1240 unique fabrication pieces but 15 to 20 mm thickness um also a couple of views um, um which sort of show um how my uh, top surface and my bottom my bottom surface is play, is quite smooth the top is not which now i that, that i think of it it should have been the other way around because people are walking on top of it the top should have been smooth and the bottom should have been uh, edgy um and uh, yeah sort of <laughs> couple of quick renders which just show where uh, how or at what scale it would sort of fit into the plaza and a couple of more quick uh, views on the google maps and uh, there's too many people but that's what i realized that i have a lot of photos <laughs> that during like this but plaza is filled with business, a yeah, lot of business. yeah so this plaza was always filled with people and uh, it's, it's it's a plaza where everybody is uh, sort of uh, like i think this where uh, like major festivals are celebrated and people uh, conglomerate here a lot uh the other thing which uh, i did not think of but when i started putting it on the side i i could see that uh this part of the vault also gives uh, an extremely scenic view of the uh, the lake as well as uh, the opera on the other side this was not the intention it was just the result of the form itself and another view uh yes. that's it thank you cool Yeah I mean like I think um it's 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 a very successful um let's say um attempt at like creating urban uh, uh, like um intervention like particularly you know like these multiple layers layered views and and also like this kind of explosive view uh, released when you actually get to the top um and, and so and this particular Uh, image is is uh, indicative of that and um so um, congratulations on like uh, all of your patience and effort kind of bearing fruit like and it and the morphology also the, or the shapes reflect a kind of very even um, um you know like curvature distribution and also the lengths of these edges and 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 uh, and also the silhouette like if you follow the thick black line that you have on your image like that's very um harmonious let's say and then so those so these are all kind of visually um visual clues as to that like maybe uh, you're approaching successful uh, implementations uh, or successful 
um, uh, shapes. And um, but one one thing that could further accentuate these kind of multiple layered views is is if you if your top and bottom, which already are texturally different. Uh, you could also make it color-wise different. Um, and therefore you can kind of see uh, that you're simultaneously seeing the bottom and, and the top, and then again, the bottom, and then again, the top and so on. I mean, and the people do that for an extent, like obviously you cannot walk on the underside. So that's that's another benefit of putting people on your uh, renders. Um, so, uh, so yeah, like, I mean, there are several, things that like you can further take this uh, trajectories and even in the detailing, you know, maybe you can highlight a path like to, to, to actually walk and places to sit and so on. Uh, but yeah, so far so good. Um, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I can only agree with everything that Charge has said. Um, uh, one thing, though, just to not not to be entirely a party pooper, but uh, to continue in in the in the the hint that Charge already says on more like what, where can you walk and where not, what is the path and so on, is also uh, to really challenge yourself is to also think of of railings and of kind of uh, these kind of aspects and. And those are those are the details that typically mess up your entire design. But but um, but in your case, it might also strengthen it. And so it's maybe a third layer to what Shaje said, not just inside and outside, but also what is the path that you offer, and where not, and how do you transition between those two, right? So how can you keep that elegance and continuity, but nonetheless also kind of add that layer of of uh, of uh, health and safety in general, but also of um, uh, of uh, sophistication. So that would be for me the next the next step, of course, right? Well, as something you could have maybe done also with the shingling and the and the um, flattening of the surfaces is that maybe instead of entirely reversing what you do now, is to do this only partially, right? So yeah. to have a central path that is uh, smooth. And to uh, there do the shimmering on the bottom, and then have a uh, the, the rest of, of, of the surfaces, and maybe with the shimmering on the top to yeah. al already indicate like this is the path where you're supposed to walk, and then this could maybe have a, a rail yeah. of some no, sorts that guides it. Kind in, of. In fact, that is a that is a very elegant kind of strategy because that is of course what uh, Snohetta uh, got away with in the in the opera house in Oslo, right? Is actually they just have very slight kind of uh, little steps and they argue that that little step is really clear enough as a boundary of what is walkable and what is not and then to make it even clearer you can play indeed with the with the texture and like tom like tom was saying that that actually you gradually it becomes almost so volatile so kind of rocky that it's clear that that is not where you want to walk and then there where you smoothen the path that is naturally your pathway right and so this you could enforce, like what Tom uh, showed yesterday, is by, by also by um, different tolerance requirements or, or setting height limits or push actually your shingling to be more extreme towards these things. So a very natural way, rather than installing your typical uh, handrails to actually do this through um, uh, your, t your texture, yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, and it would also break up the surface a little bit, right? Because you are creating a fairly large um, surface with a bit of a, let's say, well, it's, it is by, by design a repetitive pattern, but it becomes maybe a bit uh, uh, dominant kind of, and, and maybe through those kind of uh, variations in that pattern, you also break that, break that up visually. Yeah, maybe right. that, um, to build on that, like maybe, um, you know, this could be introduced in the remeshing step where you're remeshing uh, not only curvature adaptive, but also like to, to path adaptive. Uh, yeah. Remeshing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. yeah, very cool. Yeah. Let's build it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Anush. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. All right.